In the last episode about hard plumbing, we talked about the different types of PVC pipes that you can use for hard plumbing your saltwater tank. Now that we have that down, it's time to connect lengths of pipes with fittings. There are tons of different types of fittings, and I'm a plumbing dork when it comes to fittings. Whenever I'm in a plumbing supply or home improvement store, I'll walk down the plumbing aisle just to admire. Here's a rundown of the most common types of fittings that you can use for plumbing your saltwater tank. The first thing to understand about fittings is how connections are made. Connections are made with slip or threaded fittings. In a slip fitting connection, the two pieces slide together to make a connection. Note that PVC glue has to be used to make the connection watertight. Spigot fittings also form a slip connection, and spigot fittings have one side male so that you can make connections between fittings without having to use pipe. In a threaded fitting, the male side of the fitting threads into the female side. You'll see threaded fittings referred to as MPT and FPT for male pipe thread and female pipe thread. Adapter fittings are for joining two different types of fittings together. This adapter allows a slip fitting to be joined with a threaded fitting. Reducers change the size of fittings or pipe that they are joining. Note the reducers come in a variety of sizes. Coupler fittings attach two pieces of pipe together. Couplers are sometimes called repair fittings as they are commonly used to take a bare end of pipe and allow you to start your plumbing anew since you can put whatever type of fitting you want after the coupler. So far, I've only talked about fittings that make connections in straight lines. Fittings that change directions are called elbows. The most common are a 45 degree and 90 degree elbow. When water goes through an elbow, it has to change direction, which causes back pressure, which we call head pressure. Some reefers get bent out of shape about using a 90 degree elbow as it causes more restriction than a 45 degree elbow. 90 degree elbows versus 45 degree elbows. Which one should you use? We know from the return pump video that a 45 degree elbow adds about half a foot of head pressure and a 90 degree elbow adds about one foot of head pressure. Most people would say, okay, well then you should only use 45s. Here's the thing about 45s. It takes two 45s to make a 90 degree turn. So half a foot plus half a foot equals one foot. Now we've got twice as many connections to make. And when you start working with 45s over long distances, you have to match up angles and distances. It gets to be a pain in the tail. I don't fear 90 degree fittings. I will use them whenever I can, especially over a 45. Using 45s doesn't save you that much, if anything, it just adds more clutter and confusion to your plumbing design. Don't fear the 90. Fittings that let you adjust the amount of water that goes through the fitting is called a valve. The most commonly used valves around saltwater tanks are ball valves and gate valves. Ball valves are used for gross adjustments and flow. For example, all the way on or all the way off, or half on or half off. Ball valves aren't great for small or precise adjustments. Gate valves are good for that, as you can see turning the wheel makes for small adjustments in the flow. Gate valves are great for media reactors where you want precise flow. Now what about a union fitting? A union fitting connects two pieces of pipe and lets you disconnect the pieces of pipe thanks to the ring on the outside of the union that forms the connection. Inexperienced reefers suggest that union should be used whenever possible, and I strongly disagree. Unions make sense when you need to remove a piece of plumbing frequently. For example, a media reactor. Every time you need to change the media in the media reactor, you're not going to cut out and replumb the media reactor. Hence, the union's on top. There it makes sense. External return pumps also make sense to have unions in the form of true union ball valves. You can pick out a true union ball valve as each side of the valve has a union on it. With an external return pump, you'll need to hold back the water going in or out of the pump when you remove the pump for servicing. The true union ball valve makes sense here. Using unions on a sump? Not so fast. In certain situations, it makes sense. For example, on a small sump like on the Mega Matrix 120. A small sump like this could easily be removed if you wanted to clean it. Therefore, using unions on a smaller sump makes sense. Larger sumps? Forget it. The only time this sump is going to get removed is if the tank is being broken down. Total waste of your money and time to put on a union. Unions have their place, and I'm not union crazy either. When you have to make a connection between a pipe and a container, you either use a bulkhead or a uniseal. Bulkheads have a flange and an o-ring to make the connection watertight, and then a nut that tightens down to keep the bulkhead in place. Bulkheads come in slip or threaded flavors. 
Uniseals are low profile, flexible fittings made of rubber that lets you create a watertight connection without the rigidity of a bulkhead. They work great on curved surfaces. Once you understand all the different types of hard PVC fittings and you've hard plumbed a couple saltwater tanks, hard plumbing is a lot less daunting. It can get downright enjoyable. The plumbing phase of my VIP client builds is one of my favorites. There's something that's just so relaxing about working with these fittings and seeing your plumbing design come together. If all I had to do was plumb aquariums all day, I'd be okay with that. I'm Mark Kelly and Mr. Saltwater Tank coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. I'll catch you in the next episode.